Right, Skeletron. So before we talk about the boss, we've got to talk about a few changes for the world he makes to the world gen. The dungeon spawn gets kind of screwed up. The entrance is uh, reversed, so it, the entrance actually faces the ocean. The entrance is in a pit, so I had to dig myself an entrance to just to get into the place. This made getting out before the boss kills you pretty difficult, so I had to do a bit of terraforming just so I could get up to my platforms and uh, fight the boss. But that's for the worthy for you. Another issue is the old man. You know, you only get one chance to fight Skeletron per night normally, but thanks to mods, you can uh, in increase his spawn rate. You should respawn. Uh, say you died to Skeletron. Once you get back there, he should be there waiting for you. You can have multiple tries a night. With that out of the way, onto the boss. Firstly, the head. So it's practically invincible until you kill its hands. It's a pretty simple boss. Just keep your distance, snipe the arms. Uh, this weapon, the turbulence, its projectiles will home into the boss. Uh, homed into the arms. Those projectiles will do most of the heavy lifting for you. The boss on this difficulty is really fast, he can easily outpace you. So the way you keep your distance is you pay attention to where he's gonna telly. The little purple smoke is the tell. So the idea is to keep your distance from the boss and then once he's going to telly, keep your distance from that while trying not to get hit. When he tellies, he usually has to accelerate all over again. So it'll be a lot easier to keep your distance. Another thing is use vertical space to keep your distance. So if he's moving towards you, he's about to catch up to you. Drop down below him, three platforms, and start running the other side. He has to decelerate and accelerate all over again. So while he's doing that, you can just get, get some ground on him. While you're trying to get through to the other side of him, make use of your dashes. You can actually bounce off with the shield of Cthulhu. Cthulhu bounce off his hands. It's a bit touch and go. It's quite hard because the hands move around so much and so fast and unpredictably. It, you kind of just have to spam and hopefully get through to the other side. In phase two, the skulls he fires in a rapid kind of motion, not the shotgun ones, they have aggressive homing. They will circle in the air all the way to you. Best way to deal with this phase is to keep a tight circle around the boss, just moving around it just far enough so you don't get shotgunned when he does the shotgun blaster skulls, but close enough to keep the boss about half screen from you. about 50% health, he will regenerate his set of arms and you just have to do what you did before, just handle them, keep your distance and by that time you should be pretty low, you just have to deal with another phase 2 quote unquote. Unfortunately for me, I wasn't paying attention to the time, and the boss enraged. I'm just, I'm going to speed this up, this took the full file, the full time was about 13 minutes. Yeah, just, uh, just run side to side, the boss is too slow to catch up to you. I was a bit scared of getting hit, but I did multiple times, boss didn't even one shot you, it's a, it's a bit of a joke. He just take, he does take damage, like twos, and ones, just, just keep going eventually, he'll die if this happens to you, which you should pay, please pay attention to the time when you fight this boss. After you kill Skeletron, 
you get access to the Abyss weapons, which are very good. And you also get access to the best pet in the game, Ocean Spirit, small and cute. Now on to Slime God, which is the toughest fight, pre-hard mode. Up there with uh, Queen Bee for sure. I have 26 attempts which were just recorded of me doing this boss. First thing to know is the boss actually takes damage from lava, which I learned accidentally. I just put this lava down here so things wouldn't spawn at the bottom. But yeah, this will come in clutch. It will deal a lot of damage, especially to the, the tiny slimes that end up spawning. A blindfold accessory is really important. I can't remember exactly what inflicts blind uh, darkness on you or whatever the debuff's called, but it's really important. You have a lot of things to keep your eyes on. You have obviously two of the big slimes, and you also have the slime god, the weird invincible projectile that flies around trying to charge into you all the time. And when the boss splits, obviously you've got even more things to look out for, so if you're getting inflicted with darkness, you're uh, you're gonna have a bad time. A lot of this boss is just moving away from the boss. So positioning is a bit touch and go. Instead of telling you where you should be, I'll tell you where you shouldn't be in relation to the boss, and that is one level of platforms above the boss. Uh, my platforms are spaced around 30 blocks apart, so yeah, 30 blocks or so above the boss is where you're gonna die because the boss will is really fast, it'll keep bouncing towards you, and it'll bounce up and just hit you. It'll, it's like a ton of damage, and it will they will do it a lot. It's very, very annoying. 60 blocks above, or just below them, around 30 blocks, uh, will do. Where you want to be is really running along your floor of lava, so they take as much damage as possible. A long arena is more important than a tall arena for this reason. A lot of what you're going to be doing is just running side to side and then jumping up or dropping down uh, two levels and you should be able to maintain a, a distance that you can comfortably fight the boss. Uh, besides jumping into you, the bosses have uh, their own little signature attacks. So the red slime will jump and hover above you and then slam down and the red slime will release projectiles that travel up and then fall down like rain. The way you deal with this is kind of honestly you just keep moving to the side and hopefully you don't get hit. Keep your eyes above uh, at the top of the screen and you should have enough time to move out of the way especially if you dash. It's the more tougher one to uh, not get hit by. The black slime all you need to do is uh, keep level with the boss as he uh, as he slams down and do a short hop. You should hop over the projectile files directly horizontal or just a drop below them. You'll dodge all of the projectiles. The weapons I used, the spiked monstrosities, spiky ball. It is hard to aim because it has a bit of an arc to it, but when it hits, it splits, deals pierce damage. It can hit both the bosses and all the little slimes that end up spawning, and it deals pretty good single target damage. The other weapon is the enchanted axe. Throw it, uh, stealth attack throws like a bunch of them out in the start. I think they're home, but they seem to handle the little slimes that spawn. Uh, quite well. If anything, they'll take out the little slimes that are flying, just clip their wings and they'll be on the floor. If you want some single target damage, switch to the lionfish that comes from the abyss. You can use it right at the end of the fight to clean up the boss, or just if you need to get one of these little slimes out of the way, that's a good weapon to use. Yeah, keep close to your lava floor, make sure you're running along it as much as possible. The boss will follow you and just take continuous damage from it. The lava will cover you in terms of damage for this fight. Definitely the hardest fight in pre-hard mode. Yeah, this recording looks e looks kind of easy, but it, it was not as easy as I make it look. I struggled a lot on this fight. Next episode, we're going to be taking on the Wall of Flesh and getting into hard mode, and it was quite the ordeal. But yeah, see ya.